so it's such a long, boring story how I started. It's so long and so boring. It's, it's been said so many times. People watch it and like, God, again? I thought this was going to be a new YouTube video. It's going to do this again? Ah, I hate this guy. <laughs> a, a long story, really long story turned very, very short. I'll give you the bullet point version of this, okay? So I was uh, born in Germany. I was, um, I was there until the age of about six and a half, seven. I spent about six months in Pakistan and during which I learned Urdu because my first language was actually German, which I've lost at this point. I spent about s uh, seven years almost thereafter in Saudi, in Riyadh. And I went to a Pakistani school, an extremely Pakistani school, where I learned a lot of Urdu and played in the heat in the outside playground with you know, a shirt tucked in with a tie, which is what you're, it makes complete sense here with shiny shoes. We played soccer with shiny shoes on and that's it's supposed to be that way in the Khalij, right? So, so that's, that's how it works. Um, and so I did that for about seven years. Didn't learn any Arabic or anything at that time. Just kind of followed the Pakistani school curriculum that they have as a standard. Uh, then we moved back to Pakistan for another about nine months and I did almost end of eighth grade, beginning of ninth grade in Pakistan and then my dad got transferred to New York. And so about the age of 14, we moved to the United States. And I, I, I was in New York, I learned English the hard way at, by being laughed at constantly in New York. Went to high school there, went to college there. Uh, small detail, but I kind of stopped thinking like a Muslim or acting like one or really believing while I was in high school. I completely lost touch with the religion. And, um, I was that way in college too, and the first two philosophy courses I took didn't help. So they were kind of the icing on the cake, it really just put me over the edge. And it was, the, it was Allah's mercy and His gift, and the gift in the form of a really good friend that I found in sophomore year, second year of college, in, in Baruch College in New York City, that helped me kind of find my way back to the deen. And this wasn't through preaching, it was just through His good company. He just, he was there for me, that's all it was really and just a genuine, genuine friend. N never actually told me to pray, but prayed in my presence, you know? And I just kind of eventually just grew on me and I just said, uh, might as well. Just, you know, haven't prayed in a while. I hadn't even prayed Jum'ah or Eid or anything for years. That's where I was. But so, you know, and through him I got introduced to some really inspiring young people. I still remember he took me to an MSA meeting. You guys know what MSAs are, yeah? Muslim Association. So he took me to an MSA meeting in Columbia University. I still remember. Baruch College is a small college and Columbia is a big Ivy League school and big deal. So he says, I want, I want you to meet some people. He took me to this MSA meeting. And there's a circle of brothers and sisters, right? And they're discussing what they're going to do this semester. The things that were, they were going to do included, we're going to sponsor an orphan from Bangladesh. They had his picture. They were going to raise this money among each other, not even ask anybody else for money. We're going to give da'wah to at least 500 people. We're going to raise the Palestinian cause and we're going to do so by telling, uh, talking about the atrocities that are happening to all of the clubs in Columbia University in collaboration with five other universities, most of which are not Muslim Students Association like the chess club and the ping pong club and the, all those clubs. And they'll all sign off on it. And they, they pulled this off. And they had an anti-Zionism conference at Columbia University under the, and sponsored by it, and you had like a bajillion clubs mentioned underneath, and MSA was one of them, right? So you couldn't come after the, the MSA. And I'm sitting there going, my biggest concern was, am I eating pizza tonight or a fish sandwich? And these people are like, ser they're, they're serious, they're thinkers. They think beyond themselves, this is incredible. And they're my age, why are they so cool? Why are they so, I mean, I was just mesmerized by these people. You know, and, and through them I got introduced to my dear, uh, one of my dear uh, uh, role models, Imam Siraj Bahaj from Brooklyn, New York. We became really good friends. Um, and through, through him I also got introduced to a masjid which was actually very close to my house but I never went there. Uh, the Muslim Center where I met my, my Arabic teacher, uh, Dr. Abdul Samia. And my love of Quran and my love of the Arabic language was a gift of Allah to me through him through that. So it's all of the things that went right in my life starts with a friend. All of them. I gave that talk yesterday, right? It's <laughs> all of it for me starts with a friend. All of it. And that, that guy, if you met him, you'd be like, that guy? Really, that guy? 
Are you sure? You, yeah, that guy. Yep. You know, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't be able to tell. He's, but he's an unbelievable human being. He's an incredible person, right? So that happened and then fast forward again, graduated college, got married while unemployed. <laughs> um, and got married in June and come September the 11th, <laughs> same year, you know, terrible, terrible time. I was in, I was in New Jersey at the time. And um, then I started, I moved back to New York thereafter and I worked at Islamic schools and worked at a masjid and worked at as, as a chaplain at a university, worked as an Arabic teacher, at an Arabic professor at a college. And about 2005 I decided I need to just do this because I really love doing it, the, the Arabic thing. And it was a leap of faith. Who's going to come to Arabic classes? Who, does anybody enjoy going to an Arabic class? It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Most of my friends told me. I was like, no, I think I can make it interesting. I was like, yeah, you're going to make an Arabic class interesting? Really? I was like, yeah, I think I can do it. So it just kind of started at this as this crazy experiment in New York and it, word of mouth grew and people started calling from Louisiana and like California and just all over, places I've never been. Like, can you do that? My cousin went to your class in New York. I heard it was pretty good. Can you bring it to our masjid over here in California? Can you bring it to Louisiana? Can you bring it to Tennessee? And I didn't advertise. It was just somebody's cousin, somebody's auntie, somebody's puppy that just, that's how it worked, honestly. And I, didn't even, I couldn't even afford to get a hotel to stay in another place. You know what I used to, People who called me would actually give me a room in their house. I'd stay in their house for the 10 days that I would teach a class. It was, like, it was ridiculous how hospitable people were. I still remember one of the classes I, I went to in Boston. It was the 10 days I spent in Boston teaching a class. And I didn't have any place to stay. And the brother who set it up himself was a bachelor. He had a one-bedroom apartment. There's was one bedroom and a studio. Right, he said, I don't have any beds in my house. So I was like, eh, I'll do the couch. I lived on his couch for 10 days. And like years went by. Recently, I went back to Boston and he was there. I was like, you still got the couch? Can I want to sleep over? <laughs> he goes, no, I have children now, sorry. So I was like, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you know? So that, that's really where it kind of all started. And it's snowballed since. And it's, I feel like it's still just the beginning. Inshallah. A brother and then a sister will keep going back and forth. Yeah.